Hello, Audioholics. This is Logan, and welcome to Audioholics Anonymous. Today, oh my god, I am so excited for this. We are going to be reviewing The Killer's latest album, Imploding, Imploding the Mirage. Imploding the Mirage. And with me is special guest host that we bring out every so often, um, Tyler. Hi, Tyler. Yeah, that's my name last I checked. Uh, Tyler is your actual, like, birth name, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm the real host, by the way. He's the fake one. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Who's recording this again? Me. Oh, sorry. Yeah, fucking lion ass ho. I am a lion. Zero oh. out of ten. Zero out of ten. That was terrible. Almost as terrible as the, that joke you told in the Shags episode that one time. Oh, yeah, like, wasn't that, that one like, just in, insane? Didn't that, like, I, th I think, like, you know, it's funny, when I told that joke, um, it kind of, like, the stream kind of lagged for a second, like, even my internet was giving up on my bullshit. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think we've all given up on your bullshit years ago. The internet's just catching up with us now. Yeah, yeah. E even, cool. even Comcast is pissed at our show. At our wrong opinions. Com Comcast watches the podcast. He's like, how dare they dislike Trivium? Cut their internet speed! Shit. No. Um, so, seriously. The killers are one of my favorite bands of all time and one of his favorites too yeah they're great uh like they are definitely in my top 50 i have actually been marathoning the killers albums uh as of recently i've done all of them except the second to most recent apart from like the new one that we're viewing now um which was what was that called uh the 2017 album uh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I haven't listened to that one yet, but um, if wonderful. it's as good as like most of the other ones, then I don't think we're going to have a single bad album on here. You know, I think personally, I, I've heard that th that album might be wonderful. Is it wonderful, wonderful? Yeah. I feel like that's meant yeah. to be, I feel like that's meant to be like, um, oh, what's his name? The, uh... TV host from the 70s. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I can't remember. He did like Christmas specials and shit. Never mind. How do you know this? Lawrence Welk. That's it. Who the fuck is Lawrence Welk? It's something that old people know. Some of the things this dude knows. <laughs> also, I know a little bit about Lawrence Welk from watching reruns of the old match game. So, The old what? Match game. Come on, the they fuck is a match game. The match game. What is that? It's a game. I do not show. watch. Oh, they revived it with Alec Baldwin. Yeah, I'm lost. I have no fucking idea what that is. All right, fine, whatever. <laughs> I do not watch. They reference Lawrence Welk. That's all you need to know. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll take your word for it. He had something to do with bubbles, I think, as well. I don't know. Bubbles? Bubbles. Maybe you should start a game show podcast. I should, you know? There's, like, one person, like, reviewing game shows on YouTube, and he sucks. So, like... <laughs> yeah. You know, I think that's fair game. There are people reviewing game shows on... What fucking nerds? Uh, one fucking nerd. Um... I can't remember. He, like, recently changed his name on YouTube and, like, just stopped reviewing game shows, and now I just, like, he was, like, the only game in town, he wasn't very good, and now that he's not even in town, I'm done. He used to be called, like, Game Show Garbage or something like that. Wow. We should both start game show channels. Yeah. Just because it's right for the taking. I mean, it's I right for like, the taking. I mean, like I could you know, be like Alex Hefner and be like, uh, you know, sports head reacts to game shows for the first time, make yeah. millions of dollars. Do you even care about sports that much, though? 
No, but I could just wear a jersey and people would believe me. Support the team. <laughs> I mean, all he does is wear headphones and people believe him, so. <laughs> just like tattooed like a Steelers mascot on your face. <laughs> all right. Oh, God. All right, so, uh, yeah, you I'm killers. Go your tiny spiel? Yeah, let's go through my tiny spiel. Uh, the link to the album will be in the video description. I highly recommend that you use Adblock for the best results. You know, you don't want ads interrupting this kind of music. Also, fuck YouTube for these, like, 30-second ads that you can't skip. Use Adblock anyway. Yeah, they, they've been, like, doing that for a little while. I think it's getting worse recently, though. Um, like, to the okay. point where I'm starting to use YouTube less simply because I don't like ads. Like, Androids actually, like, can use ad blockers on apps, right? I, don't I thought know. that was, I thought that was, like, one of the things that, like, Android could do that iOS couldn't. I don't know. Maybe that's something I need to look into. But Anyway, if you are on a computer, especially if you're on a computer... Use ad block. ad block. All right. So, are you ready? No, I'll never be ready. All right. Well, we're doing this anyway. Five, no! four, three, two, and go. Boom. My Boom. own soul's warning. Was this a single? What were the singles? Uh, I'm going to have to relook. Hold on. Uh, Dying Breed, I think. Run for Cover. Oh, no, wait, no. So it was just Dying Breed then? Uh, no, there were other singles. They must have gotten rid of some of them. Oh, they do do, they, they do do. They do that sometimes when, um when they release the album so yeah i don't know what the singles were i guess we'd have to like i don't remember what the singles were but i remember them being really good and this is really good too oh yes this is classic sound right here this is classic sam's town kind of shit right here oh this is so answer the first single was caution then fire and bone then my soul my own soul's warning and finally dying breed yeah okay yeah, this is immediately this is exactly what I wanted and more. I'm holding judgment. So, I mean, okay, so admittedly it's not like there isn't as much guitar as there was like in the older stuff, which is kind of a sign We're of We're on like, the first song. It's too early to judge that. Yeah, but like <laughs> it would not surprise me if like there wasn't a lot of guitar in this period just because of like the state of indie rock as a whole by the way we can call them indie rockers they cannot call themselves indie rockers because they are signed to island records which is a division of universal so no fucking way that's indie you have an indie sound that doesn't make that doesn't mean you're independent So, so far, I think the mix is very clean. It's very crisp. Yeah, I can really it has like a this... lot of the elements very clearly, which is nice. This it's reminds me, you know, on the last few albums, especially, he's really kind of been, especially vocal wise, sort of channeling Bono from U2. And he continues doing that and he keeps refining refining his voice. I think he sounds better on every album. I don't know. I still maintain I think he sounded his best on their debut. He sounded like heavier, more raw, unfiltered. I think that turned yeah, out. Yeah, but lot it's better. like really I, I guess I guess it depends what you'd like. I like I think the bigger problem is, like, he sounded more, I guess you could say, raw on the first, especially the first two albums, Hot Fuss and Sam's Town. But I think, uh, like, he started polishing his sound, his vocals a little bit 
and he's able to like hit higher notes. He typically does hit higher notes. And it's just a cleaner experience. So I guess it depends what you prefer. I don't obviously have a problem with raw vocals. But like, I don't know, maybe earlier on, he sounded sort of like, uh, oh, I can't remember. Sort of, maybe sort of like the cult or maybe a, like a little bit like the Sex Pistols or something like that. And then later on, he just started channeling U2. So this is a very synth heavy song. I yeah. think my initial impressions, like it's pleasant, it's nice, but the vocals aren't gripping me. Um, the melodies are not all that memorable to me. I guess the vocals are kind of gripping me, but like, I, I feel like people who like just came from like the first two really big albums would kind kind of find this a bit of a shock. Like I said, I've been uh, marathoning the killers the last few days, so this is not uh, anything major. Now we are on blowback. Yeah, blowback at ten seconds. This is different. This is like, oh my god. I'm digging this a little bit more. Oh my god, you know what this kind of sounds like? Listen to that bass. No, you know what like, the instrumentals kind of sound like? We're up all night to get lucky. We're up all night to get lucky. Yeah, I don't know. That's a little bit more, more disco-y than this is. I guess. I like it. This is like... I think this is like, this has like a more evolved sound, I would say. Like, it's less maybe indie rock. I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's indie rock, but like modern indie rock, where it's not even really much rock anymore. But I kind of like that. Um... See, this song is a lot more gripping. I think the melodies are much more memorable, much more well-constructed yeah. than the first song. Yeah. Now, maybe um, that's just because that was my first time hearing it. Maybe on repeat listens, yeah. the melodies will grip me a little bit more. But yeah. an album like this is really reliant on melody. We're like, in the first two albums, you could really rely on the instrumentation when the melodies weren't all that memorable. But on this album, it's very synth-heavy, very bass-heavy. There's not a lot to roll back on if the vocals aren't working for you. Yeah. I would say that um, I, really like, I really like this sound, but I could maybe understand if, like, some diehard Killers fans might not. Because this, like, over the years, they've sort of been straying further and further away from their original sounds, and they're attempting different things, and that's good. A band should do that. But the caveat to that, unfortunately, is that sometimes you piss off the, you know, loyal fans that have been with you since the beginning. Yeah. Sometimes that's a risk you need to take, but... And this is hardly, like... This is hardly, like... This song isn't, like, a huge departure from their early stuff. This isn't, I mean, yeah. The and, first song, I mean, even the first song wasn't that big of a leap. Yeah, this isn't, like, a huge departure anyway. This isn't, like, you know... This isn't like, you know, Taylor Swift level, like, you know, she was country, now she's, you know, full on pop, you know, this is I don't like, know, her most recent album had a lot of, like, uh, it, it had a different sound to it, it really uh, did. I, I know it's called Something Folklore, so that implies that it might have, like, more stripped down sound. I haven't heard any of the singles off of it. Yeah, the album is called Folklore, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it does sound different. It's definitely an album that maybe you should check out. I, I should probably check out just to see, like, I feel like by the title it would be kind of more stripped down, but uh, that's not what I'm hearing. Oh, and also her last album was, was pretty good overall as well. There were a few songs I didn't like. Um, me being the main one, I don't know why the fuck she led with that, but the Archer, one of the best pop songs I have heard in a long time. Why are you time. listening to Taylor Swift anyway? 
I like to keep up to date with pop songs. I like to I know what's what's going on. At, yeah. at least more than you do. Maybe not like to the Fair point enough. where I'm listening to the top like Billboard all the time or anything, but yeah. like if the new Ariana Grande or the new Taylor Swift comes out, I'll at least yeah. give it a try. No, I can't listen to Ariana Grande because it reminds me of my ex. We are on Dying Breed. This was another single. We are on Dying Breed at 12 seconds. I actually, I actually remember when this one dropped. This one I immediately remember. Oh, wait, no, that's because it was the most recent one. That's right. Yeah. Came out last week. I remember last week. <laughs> what? Remember like last week. Back in my day when this single came out. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is like, yeah. For the record, I, like, I, heard I remember I immediately just, fell in yeah. love with this song, like, when it came out this is my first time hearing it it's got like a uh i don't know if this was on purpose but it's kind of got like a galloping feel to it yeah yeah back a whole one week when the death toll was only 167,000 due to coronavirus and not like what 180 million now I'm not even keeping track anymore. It's yeah. gotten so out of hand. Yeah. Um, but what's not out of hand is this song because it's like perfectly within hand. It's amazing. Yeah, this I really um, like the groove. Yeah, this album. I I guess you could maybe make the argument that it's a little bit more mainstream than what they've sort of done before, but not so much that I think it would turn turn off most fans. I think some could see some problems with this, and I could maybe see this being a slightly more controversial album within the hardcore fan base, but I think most people are going to like it. Because I really like it. So far, anyway. And, like, this is hardly, you know, like, as you can hear, like, this is hardly, like, you know, this is hardly Imagine Dragons or anything. This is, like, hardly that level of, like, you know, techno shit. Like, this is still, I guess, to some degree, rock, but less so than it was. Yeah, I gotta say this is, Blowback was really good, but this is probably my favorite song so far. Yeah. I think the opener was a poor choice. Dying Breed, I think, may have back, been a way better opener than My Own yeah. Soul's Morning. That probably could have gone yeah. later in the album. If this keeps going the way that it does, it could theoretically be my favorite Killers album. I could see that, but it's not a perfect record. I'm already finding flaws with it. Um, yeah, but, like, I guess. I don't know. I think of, like, one song. And, like, that one song isn't even bad. It's just not the best thing. No, I'm not saying anything I've heard so far is bad. I think maybe the track placement's a little bit uh, mis- or what's the word? Yeah, I, I guess I see what you mean. Like they should have had like the they should have had like a more like upbeat song somewhere towards the beginning. Yeah, and then, like to Beth, a great song to put there because yeah. it slowly builds up and builds up. Yeah, and that would have been. I guess that would have been back. like a good way to like introduce it. Oh my god! So I we're can... now on caution at ten seconds. Yeah, I kind of loved this out. Can you check on Amazon to see if this is on vinyl yet? Sure. So you said we're on caution? Yeah. Okay, caution, and we are 30 seconds in. I think it said this was the first single. Yeah. Actually, what the fuck? 
open with this. This feels like an opener so far. Like it's gonna build to something, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's on vinyl. Yeah, yeah, this should have been the opener. You can buy it on vinyl for $24. $24, that's fair. How much is Hot Fuss? Uh, it's about the same, about $25. Hmm. Sam's Town? That one's for Hot Fuss. What, five bucks? 25 bucks. Oh, 25, okay. For Sam's Town, the vinyl's about twenty dollars. Okay, but you can get it for like fifteen if you buy like used off Amazon. This reminds me of oh my god! Speaking of U two, this kind of reminds me of um what is it? Caught in a moment by U two. You've been caught in a moment, and you, you can't are a much get out of it. I am. Huh? I said you are a much bigger YouTube fan than I am. I am. I put songs to remember. Or no, uh, song, what am I thinking? Songs of Innocence uh, in my top 50, which is an album that a lot of people hate because of the absolute batshit way that they tried to market it. I don't Why would know. you hate an album because of how they tried to market it? Um, so... You're an Android user, so maybe you don't remember this backlash. But essentially, uh, you two put this on people's iPhones against their will. Why? Because they thought it was a good idea. <laughs> you thought wrong. <laughs> Everyone likes you two, except for the critics who absolutely hate you two. I've never really enjoyed YouTube's sound, personally. Yeah, like... Like, it's a really good album, just don't assume, don't have that big of an ego that you think everybody is going to like it and not be pissed off that this random album is somehow appearing on their phone. That they can't get rid of, by the way. Yeah, Caution would have been a really amazing opener. I agree yeah. with you. I, I don't know what they were thinking, opening it yeah. with my own this morning. I guess that's like um, the only, I mean, like, that wouldn't, that to me, like so far, if the album were to end here, that alone I don't think would make it less than a ten out of ten for me. Um, I think track placement is important, but it's not a deal breaker. I'd say it's at least enough to bring it down half a point. Maybe. Shirts all like folded up. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a cool know, solo. I, I think you like, know, momentum is a but, very. Yo, Tyler, cool listen to the solo. Yeah, I hear it. That is such a good bluesy solo. That's like kind of like. It kind of reminds me of like Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of shit, or like Joe Satriani. Is that even a guitar? It sounds like a keyboard. I think it's a guitar. Maybe maybe it's like a keytar or something, but. I don't know. Anyway, as I was saying, like momentum is a very important thing for an album. You have to start the album with a bang so people get excited to listen to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You know, this album kind of starts on a really mellow note and then blowbacks maybe a little better and then Dying Breed finally ramps it up. So the album starts slow for me. And I think the other big criticism is that um, it's kind of hit or miss. I think, like, a lot of the vocals and melodies are hit or miss for me. And speaking of songs with vocal and melody, we are on Lightning Fields featuring K.D. Lang. I don't know who the fuck that is. We're at 26 seconds in. So, like, some of the melodies and choruses and things like that, they, they do grip me, and I think they're interesting, and I, I like them, but some I don't. And when I don't suddenly I'm not feeling the music anymore. You know, it's yeah. what I was saying earlier. Like, you're, this album, I think, is greatly sacrificing uh, instrumental prowess. You know, the first album, Hot Fuss, it wasn't, like, fantastic instrumentally, but it was really cool. Sam's Town was way more awesome instrumentally. Yeah, exactly. That's why I prefer it as an album. This album kind of takes a step back from that really interesting instrumentation 
and focuses maybe a little bit too strongly on the sins. Um, and I mean, like, maybe that would be okay if this were a different band, but it's the Killers, and the fact that, like, the Killers are taking a step back from that unique instrumentation that made them what they are is kind of hurting the album a bit for me. You know, like I said, I can understand that point of view. To me, personally, I don't think that really bothers me. It's like, I don't have a problem with bands sort of changing their sound. And yeah, like you can make this, you could make the argument that maybe they're trying to go a little bit more mainstream, but it's kind of like one of those things, like, it's kind of like Metallica's Black Album. We, we covered this in The Wrong Opinion. Go check that. But, like, Black Album is not a mainstream or a pop album or a sellout album. It's no. a regular metal album that has some mainstream qualities to it. That's well, what I would I, say I, about I'm the not Killers. criticizing this album because it's going more mainstream. What I'm saying is... If you sacrifice one aspect of the music, you have to up your game in the other aspect that people come for, i.e. the vocals and the melodies, and they haven't. I think they upped their game in the instrumentation. I think the instrumentation, and especially the production on this, and I really like the vocals as well. That's just me personally. I think it just sounds cleaner, but... I thought we just agreed that the instrumentation got a lot simpler on this album. Not simpler. I wouldn't... I wouldn't say simpler. I would say it's just, it's different. I wouldn't say it's more simple. That's sort of, again, sort of like saying like, going back to that Metallica analogy, like you didn't have like the really fast thundering, like biddly, 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 biddly guitar solos on the Black Album, but it's by no means not impressive in other oh, areas they've taken away aspects of the instrumentation from previous albums and focused more strongly on synths. I would say that makes it simpler. I mean, I guess you could say that, but like, I don't know, like that, that, I guess that implies that like, you know, being really good at a piano isn't really an accomplishment or a synth isn't really an accomplishment. I mean, it is an accomplishment, but like the first two albums didn't have, they had more than impressive synths. They had impressive guitar. They had impressive keyboard, like the whole nine yards. The only thing that's impressive here is the synths, you know? I guess I could understand that. I guess it doesn't really, again, it still doesn't really bother me, but I, I can agree with that point of view. Objectively, you're right. It is a lot more simple. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I am enjoying my time with this album yeah. so far. I mean, okay, so we're about halfway through the album. I think I have a good idea of what the rest of the album is going to sound like. I'm leaning to an eight right now. I'm going to need to give this another listen, but because of the unique instrumentation, call it more simple or whatever, but like they still have like, it still has well, a more unique cool. sound, almost like kind of like funk in a way, like on this song, which by the way, we are now on fire and bone at 35 seconds. This was another one of the singles. Was it? Uh, yeah. That's what you said, right? I don't remember. <laughs> um, yeah, like this so kind of reminds me almost like, like... 10 out of 10? Huh? So you're leaning more towards a 10 out of 10 right now? I'm going to need to listen to this album again. But tentatively, I will give it... Maybe a 9.5 or a 10 or anywhere between a 9 and a 10. I'm kind of fluctuating. I guess it does depend how the final four songs go after yeah. this one. But, like, assuming they stay on the same track, they don't get substantially better, substantially worse. I think an 8 out of 10 is fair for this one because, yeah. you know, also, like, like, sometimes the melodies are very, very good, but sometimes I kind of just find myself drifting off. It's boring to yeah. me. Yeah. Well, like... And also, like, I guess it's a little bit unfair to compare them to, like, the timeless masterpieces of Hot Fuss and Sam's Town because they've had time to mature now. Like, 
what the first album came out in 2004 that's 16 years ago yeah songs like mr brightside and you know sam's town which is 14 years old and things like that they've had time to kind of ingrain themselves in culture like even if you don't love mr brightside which um, you know, you still have to admit that it succeeded in what it set out to do, which was be memorable and be catchy and, you know, ultimately be a well-rounded concept and obviously it succeeded in doing that. So, you know, I, I guess we'll have to kind of see how timeless this album is, but... I'm really liking this song, actually. This might be my favorite so far. I might be with you. I'm still yeah. kind of leaning slightly towards Dying Breed, but it's... Yeah, that, that actually... Yeah, I'm kind of like... It's, it's probably a tie between that. I can't think of a single bad song on this album. Like, I'm gonna the have to... The song so far was My Own Soul's Warning. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say that's really a bad song. No, it's not bad. It's just slightly weak. Yeah. Uh, uh, and maybe Lightning Fields. Lightning Fields was a little weak. Yeah, maybe. Um, I think, like I said, the biggest issue is, like, parts of the song work for me and parts of the song don't, melodically. Yeah. There's too much... There's too much focus on the melodies for the melodies to be as samey and like airy as they are so let me explain what like song are we on i now? said like the melodies aren't really working for me Hold the on, reason Tyler. for that is because like Tyler, a lot of we are on very we very are on w running towards a place 15 seconds yeah. yeah so i'm sorry repeat what you were saying so, like, part of my issue with the melodies on this album is a lot of them sound very similar to one yeah. another. A lot of them are very airy, like, yeah. and, and not very melodically interesting. And I kind of like certain, like, atmospheric types of music. I mean, like, you know, I have an entire series where I'm trying to get into trip-hop, which the biggest strength of trip-hop is the atmosphere. So... I don't know. Maybe it's because I haven't heard a lot of like later killers. This is really the first exposure I've had to anything after uh, Sam's I would Tech. say, I haven't, again, I haven't listened to the 2017 album, Wonderful, Wonderful, but uh, I would say nothing I've listened to so far sounds exactly like this. I don't so, know. But to me, like, what I want out of a killer song is, you know, memorable melodies, you know. Uh, I want memorable performances on the vocals. You know, say what you will about Mr. Brightside. Like, you can't tell me that that vocal performance isn't iconic. Yeah. Thousands I think they, definitely, I think they definitely improved over their career. Again, he was able to hit higher notes. He was able to sound more clean and like all maybe but i think he's kind of sacrificed authenticity he sounds more i get you're right he sounds less raw but yeah, and, more and he never sound he was never a bad vocalist i just personally think he sounds better now than he did on the first two albums and for the record like maybe it's just because i'm not paying too close attention but i don't think I don't think he's done anything vocally impressive on this album. He hit higher notes. He did more screams. He did more interesting thing with the, things with his vocals and his enunciation on the first two albums than anything in this album. I mean, I guess he was earlier. Not, I guess, as much on this song. But, um, you know, all of that being said, I will have to retract, I think, what I, I'll have to retract what I was speculating earlier. This. I don't think this will ever be my favorite Killers album. It'll be up there, don't get me wrong. But I think Sam's Town sort of wins overall by virtue of being a more grand statement. Yeah, Sam's Town is a really good album. I think that's maybe their magnum opus. 
I mean, it's like bookended on both sides by amazing epics. So, I mean, like... I like, it, like it the sounds looks, of the album isn't bad though. It's not even weak. Yeah, like you know, like like Samstown, like you know, a lot of people, you know, make the Bruce Springsteen connection, and that's valid because that's what they were planning on doing, and that's what they succeeded in doing. It was supposed to sound like Born to Run, but I also would say, kind of like it, it's almost like a Queen like statement. Like, can't you listen to? Like, you can kind of listen to something like Sam's Town and think of something like, you know, Pink Floyd, Queens, A Night at the Opera, My Chemical Romance, something like that. Yeah. Just like one of those, or, or, or like David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust album. Something like that. This doesn't have that grand of a statement. And, and that's okay. It's still really good music. But by virtue of the route that they went on, I would not call this the best Killers album. It's still really good, though. Don't get me wrong. So we are now on My God v- featuring Way S. Blood. Ten the- seconds in. Who the fuck are these people? I have no idea. Maybe they're, um... Are they Maybe they're like DJs or synth players. I don't know. Yeah, because like I'm realizing more and more like, like uh, this is like a thing that's been going on for over a decade, but you know I'm only really catching on to it now because I'm a I'm fucking boomer trapped in a Gen Z body. But uh, like that's weird how like DJs and producers are like credited as feature. It's like that's like if you were like. Be My Baby by um, the Ronettes featuring Phil Spector. Like, Eminem as an artist would just be called Eminem featuring Dr. Dre. <laughs> exactly. At least for the first few albums. I mean, didn't he produce and like make most of the beats of pretty much all of his early albums? Uh, I Yeah, like, but I think like towards like the beginning of towards like or towards like the middle of the 2000s I think is like when they kind of like when he kind of like broke up with Dr. Dre and kind of started doing his own beats I could be wrong about that though he definitely doesn't do uh Eminem's beats anymore I think he did one or two of them oh, in okay. the new album I don't know for sure though don't quote me on that this is probably the closest this album comes to making a grand statement. You say that, I think it's the weakest song. Weakest song, yet yeah, maybe uh, you can have that opinion, but like I think instrumentally it's like has that sort of arena rock sound. Again, going back to something like Queen, like you can kind of compare this to something like We Will, We Will Rock You like a bit more technically proficient than that but kind of that same sort of arena sound to it i think it sounds kind of like disco yeah kind of i mean yeah kind of i I would say they definitely went in a more dance rock dance pop direction and i don't necessarily mind that if this is, I don't know if this is Brandon Flowers singing right now, but if it is, he's hitting like the most impressive notes he has this entire album. I don't know if that's him or not. It didn't sound like him, but it I could didn't. Be but it, I, I don't know. Maybe it's Wayne, whatever his name is. Yeah, I don't know. Or not what West. Way ass blood. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, like. I don't want to dislike this album, you know? I don't, I, I mean, I don't. I mean, like, I'm definitely going to have to, we are planning on doing a wrong opinion on the killers. Like, I've been uh, marathoning the albums, he is too. So, I think it's fair to say that a wrong opinion of the killers will be coming soon. Yeah, definitely. Probably, like, in the near future, I would say. I think what we're planning on doing is I think we've abandoned System of a Down, but we'll probably come back to it after the Killers. Yeah. 
We're gonna and then that. after that, I think we're going to do either, like, Symphony X or Haken. I don't know. Okay. Maybe Haken, since they might be a tiny bit more relevant now because of their more recent album. Yeah. I don't think Sy- Symphony X has released anything recently, have they? Uh, they released something. I think their last album was 2018. Okay. I think. So we're on When the Dreams Run Dry at 36 seconds. Oh my god, yeah. This immediately has the best chorus of anything on The Killers. This is probably maybe even my favorite song on the entire album. And they put it like so like far back in the album. So answer, uh, Symphony X's last album came out in 2015 actually. Oh wow, so they, that's actually a really long time. They might actually be due for a new one soon. Let me look yeah. that up. Because if that's the case, then we may want to hold off on that. Yeah. Hold off on that till it's a little bit more relevant. Maybe that's what we kind of need. See, see, that's marketing. You release the video, and then, like, fairly soon afterwards, you release the wrong opinion. Then you can double dip. And that would be so clever if people cared. Um. So... According to Blabbermouth, in May, Symphony X is ready to start writing a new album, yeah. which means it's not coming out anytime soon. So yeah, we could and especially considering, like, COVID, which has kind of, like, stalled the music industry quite a bit. I can't wait for the new Blue Oyster Cold album. Yeah, that's supposed to come out, like, later on. October 7th, was it? Yeah. I think. Yeah. So I'm guessing, like, what, are they not going to release singles for it? October 9th. Yeah, they're supposed to release singles within the next few weeks. Well, I mean, you don't really have much time left. You got, like, a little over a month. Two months. You have, like, a, no, you have, like, a little over a month to sell this album. Because we're, like, towards the end of August now. Oh, yeah, you're right, technically. You have like a little over a month to, to like push this it. album. I'm guessing it'll maybe be like one or two singles. That's what I just said, yo. Yeah, yeah anyway. but nobody cares when you say it. Nobody cares what you say. This might be my favorite song on the album. I think easily it's mine. Yeah. It has the best chorus. Yeah. I think the biggest problem this album has is like, I think everything's kind of steadily maintaining a, a good quality to it, but nothing is standing out to me. There isn't one song on this album that is anywhere yeah. near the quality of, like, you know, Mr. Brightside. Yeah, or I can understand I that. Young. This is probably the closest it gets, though. Yeah. Um, I mean... Or even, like, some of the later songs on Sam's Town. I would you know, say like those, maybe, gone. like... I would say I'm going to, like, drop it down to a nine with the reservation that I could listen to it again and give it a higher rating or maybe even a lower rating. But I think more – I think most likely a nine is a perfectly valid way to rank it. I think I'm still going to stick with eight, unless the last song blows me away. Yeah. I mean – Like, I like I don't know. I'd say, like, for me, I've listened to Day and Age, and I know what an 8 out of 10 sounds like. It's not nearly this impressive. It's a lot more boring. I think Didn't this you is say that was easily what an like 8 out of, 10 out of 10 should 10, be. Though? Huh? Didn't you say that was easily, like, a 7 out of 10, though? Oh, that's right. I said it was a 7 out of 10. It was – that's right. I did, like – bring it down because i'm like you know right taking notes for the wrong opinions yeah all right we are on the final track the title track imploding the mirage imploding the mirage okay
I really like the intro to this song. Yeah. I'm sorry, we're just listening to this now. We're just... There's going to be so much dead space. I mean, that's yeah. fine. That's why it's a listen-along podcast. Yeah, I guess. It doesn't, like, matter as much, I guess, on this sort of format. You know what? This might be my new favorite song. Yeah. Yeah, I might have to agree. Where was this the rest of the album? Yeah, like, again, I can't say anything is really bad. And I think I want to listen to this again while we're not talking over it. Because I feel like it will improve if we do that. Oh, almost definitely. I might give the, I'm, you know what, I am going to give this another listen for the wrong opinion. But, yeah. you know, I think, like, so far, I don't think there's any way this comes close to either Hot Fuss or uh, Sam's Town. There's no way. Yeah, you're right. Um, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to say it's a 9 out of 10. That will be my final verdict, uh, at least for this podcast we might change our minds in the video we might change our minds later down the line but tentatively it's a nine out of ten this is an album i can unequivocally recommend whether you're a killers fan whether you've never heard this band before this is an album i can highly recommend you know i've talked a lot about the problems that i've had with this album that deserves taking off a point or two, so I think I'm going to stick with my 8 out of 10. I think that the uh, track placement, except for the beginning, maybe being a little bit slow, um, a few weaker tracks, and just not really having any overall... I'll say this, this is a good out. kind of... I'll say this, this is a good way to end the album, I think. I agree, I agree. They at least kind of got that right, I think. Uh, you know, this is an album that should have more amazing songs. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, like... It feels a little bit of a cheat to say this isn't that great because it's not as good as two really amazing albums. Like, that's saying, like... That's like saying, like, oh... Van Halen sucks because they aren't as good as the Beatles. Like, yeah, well, no, that's a really high bar. They're a band of their own albums. Yeah. Like you're. That's one thing you are allowed to do. I guess. I mean, and even judging on like, if even if I were judging this on its own merits, it still doesn't have any standouts. A uh, dying breed and imploding the mirage probably come the closest. The what was the other song too. that we really liked? Running towards a place. Yeah. No, this is what I'm saying. Like this wasn't a memorable album to me. I don't remember. Like it's going one ear and out the other. It's yeah. not bad music. It's just not particularly memorable yeah. music for me. Ask me in an hour to sing back a single melody, yeah. and I don't think I could manage it. Well, I don't know By if I could way, really do that on like. Now. I mean, to be fair, though, I don't think I could do that on, like, almost any album I've listened to for the first time, so. I could. Maybe. Yeah, like, if it were a really good album, like, a uh, perfect example, I listened to Dirt the whole way through for the first time today. Really? I thought, okay. Yeah, I thought I heard the whole album before, too, but then I realized I don't recognize half of these songs so if i, I did this to it before it must have been a really long time ago well, i mean a lot of the songs we both heard like already like the first like few at least like them bones uh well yeah rooster. everybody knows them bones everybody knows uh rooster and everybody knows wood but i swear to god i have not heard a single song on this album what was that one this. song down by the river or something i think everybody's heard that too damn that river yeah, yeah that's nope, it never heard it Oh, I'd heard it before. Maybe that's because I actually did listen to the album. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't think I'd ever heard it before. And you know what? If you had asked me to sing you back a melody, I could have sang back, like, a melody from almost every song, you know? 
It's yeah, just, it was that good. But yeah, like, I can't say the same thing of this album, you know? Yeah. Oh, it, again, comparing, like, an all-time classic like Dirt to this is unfair. I'm just using it as an example. Like, there yeah. are definitely albums that you could immediately remember the yeah. first time hearing it, but this isn't one of them for me. I think Actually, Go I'm... Back was the first really good song. Dying Greed is a great song. Mm. Imploding the Mirage and When the Dreams run dry are the only other two great songs on the album the rest of it is just really good so yeah. i think eight out of ten is probably fair from my perspective um i'm going to give it a nine out of ten tentatively because you're right that maybe it's not as grand of a statement and maybe it's not as memorable immediately but you know, the reason that a lot of pop songs are memorable, it's not even because that, you know, they're necessarily earworms out of the gate. They become earworms because of overexposure. You have to listen to this album a lot to really, I think, love it. I mean, that's so, true of a lot of albums. You exactly. Know? So I think tentatively, I will give it a nine out of 10 just for the unique instrumentation and really good vocals and you know standard things that the killers are already well known to do already um but tentatively nine out of ten honestly it could go either way it could go down it could go up i could see that happening but for this video nine out of ten so all right that's the end of the album but don't go just yet time to bring back a classic. It's time for Pitchfork. Yeah, so Pitchfork released a review of this. Yeah, which is actually album. kind of... I don't even know what the fuck they're going on about. Yeah, like, honestly, it's kind of surprising because usually they kind of take their sweet-ass time to come out with a review for a new album. This, they basically so, released it on the day that it came out. Maybe it's just because, like, I'm not deeply ingrained in the Killers fan culture, but is there a thing with, like, you know, homosexuality in that, in, in well, that fandom? Why don't, you because... just, why don't you just read this and we'll come to our own well, conclusions. Because Pitchfork is going on, to quote, to understand how far queer culture has come in public acceptance – Look no further than Brandon Flower from The Killers. From the ambisexual roundelay of Somebody Told Me to the way he stressed the rival beautiful boy in When You Were Young to the cheeky interpolation of Bronsky Beats epochal he's leaving home anthem small town boy on his solo track I Can Change, Flowers has telegraphed a primal longing. Why am I not gay? What? What? Okay. Huh? Just, What's wrong with that? Like, what, you have to be... You have to be gay to be flamboyant? I don't... Like, that's not even the issue I have with this. Why are they trying to say that Brandon Flowers has a primal longing to be gay? I, I guess just because he's always been so flamboyant, like... You know, he yeah, dresses super That's fancy, like he sings in that kind of flamboyant homophobic way. homophobic things I've ever read. <laughs> huh? I said, you understand that's like the most unintentionally homophobic thing I've ever read. Exactly. Like, I I'm not like defending that in any way. I'm just like trying to like figure out what the hell he's talking about. Like, I don't... Oh, what was that one? Like, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of like, what was that one band that we saw at Sonic Temple where he was like dancing around and like... I can't remember his name. He, like, kind of reminded us of Queen. He wasn't, like, super know. famous, but... I can't remember them. We'll have to, like, look at the, maybe, set list for last year, but... Um... I don't know, but, like, this is just... What are they talking? And then they even go on to say that, like, the Killers album, Imploding the Mirage, has more bangers than a, than a Killer album should... 16 years after their their debut because they haven't they haven't matured uh, what have you heard is... their debut it, i mean it's not a huge leap but it's still a leap i i mean 
I guess I could understand where they're coming from. I get, like, I think if you're coming at it from a perspective like Tyler's, I can understand this isn't maturing this could maybe even be seen as sort of a regression um but i'd say like especially in terms of like vocal sound and instrumentation this is a maturity but in terms of like making a grand statement maybe not yeah i don't i just don't even know what this guy is talking about he doesn't even start talking about the actual music until like the fourth paragraph wow this is like, this still isn't the worst Pitchfork review we've read, though. Uh, I just, no, it's not, but like, it's still terrible. Like, how do they pass shit? Like, did some, did some editor really read this and go, oh, yes, that is perfectly fine. That's meow, 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 meow. Is there actually a review in this fucking article? Because and, and what's I'm the rating for this? One. It's a seven point four or seven point six, right? It's a seven point four. Seven point four, right? This is the highest rated Killers album, I believe. Like, okay, people, let me ask you a question. Not, not that you can answer me, but when you think of a review of anything. Do you think about somebody randomly talking about some political issue that has little to nothing to do with the, the thing that they're reviewing? Or do I mean, you picture somebody talking about the thing they're actually reviewing? I mean, unless because you're they Anita don't Sarkeesian, do that I would say, like, article. I mean, unless you're Anita Sarkeesian, you know. They do eventually talk about the album, though. How yeah. quarantine may enervate this most arena of rock bands we don't know. For now, though, Imploding the Mirage with key production and songwriting assists from Jonathan Ratto gives no indication Flowers has downsized his ambition to make the loudest, grandest rock album in an era that sees too few of them. This is barely a rock album, dude. What? This is like... I, I mean, yeah, like, that all sounds like good shit. Why is it a 7.4? That's like what you give an average album. And, like, yeah, I'm you could say, like, maybe this is not as good, about. but, like, again, this is the best. The classics, like, Hot Fuss and uh, Samstown, I think that's 5.4 and 5.8, respectively. Yeah, something like that. I just don't understand what the hell he's talking about. Yeah. You know what? People in the comments, tell me if I'm just stupid, and that's why. But it really just seems like he's going on about nothing. Remember, first... First one to comment, you're stupid. Get the sub for sub. <laughs> no, first one to comment, you're stupid, gets banned. Okay. But just kidding. You just make, kidding. I am do, stupid, so you can say that. No, 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 no. You get banned only you get banned only if you write it Y O U R stupid. <laughs> no, then you really deserve to be banned. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just yeah. don't even I don't even know what to say to this like at least other Pitchfork articles talk about the album and the music in a way that makes yeah. sense even well, if it may be stupid even if it's even if they're you know criticizing a band for the punishable sin of being French yeah <laughs> But at least that had something to do with the music. What is, what does being gay have to do with any of these songs? Did you pick up any like themes of gay acceptance in this album? I don't know. I I, I think the only I mean, acceptance I, I came out with is acceptance for this fucking but... instrumental like synth and vocals and shit. I wasn't reading the vote, the lyrics like super closely, but I wasn't picking up a concept album on what it's like to live in no, society it's like, as a gay man. It's like South Park where they have like subliminal like sexual undertones, like like we like like like, like it's the circle of blowjob life, like. <laughs> Actually, it seems like a lot of this, a lot of this album, or at least the first song, is about religion. Because apparently, Brandon Flowers is a Christian. 
And uh, that song, the first song is about God. I didn't know that, but okay. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. What about what about caution? Caution is about. Uh, okay, so it's about Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Yeah, but it tells the story of a girl out of a band's hometown, Las Vegas. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Bottom line, fuck Pitchfork. Yeah, fuck Pitchfork. But Pitchfork needs to die. You know what I think? You know what I think? I think Alfred Soto has a prime belonging to be gay. <laughs> is that the dude who wrote that? <laughs> His name is Alfred Soto. <laughs> he reviewed a Sheryl Crow album. He's definitely, he definitely wants to be gay. A Sheryl Crow? Has Sheryl Crow released an album recently? In 2019. Huh. I haven't heard anything from her. Well, I mean, Alanis Morissette just released an album. <laughs> Apparently, it's Stevie these... Nicks is in it. Whoa, what? I'd yeah. like to hear modern Stevie Nicks. That'd be interesting. Anyway, anyway. unless you have more speaking shit of, to do on Pitchfork. Yeah, so uh, speaking of things that need to die, uh, this podcast. So, without further ado. Salutations. This has been Audioholics Anonymous.